Good morning, everyone. This is Mike, AE0MT, shooting another little short video to show you the satellite setup. I've got the main array over on the behind pointed uh, to a park position. And right now, the satellite antennas are also at a park position pointing directly south. In a few moments, they will start tracking an early morning pass of FO29. This particular pass is going to be going nearly directly overhead, so we'll be able to see the elevation system work, uh, work its fancy, if you will. So, please stand by. We'll uh, see you rotate. Good morning again, everyone. We've got everything up and running. The antennas are now pointed at the satellite. FO29 has just started its pass. This particular pass is going to be bringing the satellite up to about 87 degrees of elevation. So it should go right overhead, swing around, and come back around the back side. So we'll see what happens. The antenna on the right is an M squared 432 CP, uh, 432 UG, I guess it is, ultra gain, 42 element circularly polarized antenna. And on the left is a M squared 2 meter, 14 element circularly polarized for 2 meters. Below that is just a, a, a TV antenna. At the base of the stack, if you will, the rotator assembly, is a Yesu G800 rotator. It's mounted it's in its normal orientation, but the mass clamp has been moved to the bottom. On top of that is a <laughs> aluminum plate, and to that aluminum plate is mounted a pair of pillow block bearings. Those bearings support the aluminum center section of the cross boom, and the fiberglass tubes are attached to that aluminum center section so that there's no conducting material in the path of the antennas. Attached to the cross boom is a little uh, box, a little electrical box that houses a GPS, a linear accelerometer, and a magnetic compass. Those sensors are fed down through a CAT5 line into the rotator controller in the basement. So we're using the analog uh, potentiometer inside the azimuth rotator and the accelerometer inside the sensor box to tell us what our actual position is. To elevate the antennas, you can't see it from this side, we have a linear actuator that's powered by 24 volts DC that is uh, press, uh, pushing against a lever attached to the cross boom. So as the linear actuator extends, it elevates the antennas. So you should be able to see that they are starting to be pointed up relatively significantly. Looks like we're at about 30 degrees so far. And they keep on going up. You can't really see it all that well, but on the uh, on the mast to the rear of the satellite array is my uh, HF stuff, if you will. Uh, that's on an azimuth rotor as well. At the bottom, I have my home-built spider beam for 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10. Above that is a 5 element beam on 6 meters. Above that is a, you want to say it's an 11 element beam on 70 centimeters. And off the top is a 15 element on 2. That 15 element really is more like a 13 element. It's got two extra reflectors. Capping off the mass is a uh, 2 meter 70 centimeter vertical. I also have a uh, 160 meter inverted L. That's not in this picture. I'll show in another video. So we can see that the elevation is up to about 45 degrees. And as the satellite passes, it'll continue to go up. Yeah, it went up just a little bit more.
The rotator controller is connected to the software set PC32. There's still a little few things I need to, uh, nuances I need to iron out. Uh, but that should be, uh, shouldn't be too big of a deal. Eventually I want to actually implement a PID controller into the motor so that it moves more smoothly and, uh, and basically keeps on moving the whole time. You can see that this is now starting to get up into pretty high elevation. Before too long, you'll see that this is going to rotate around it, uh, around to the other side. Now this antenna uh, array will only go up to 90 degrees, or just shy of 90 degrees. The reason for that decision is for a few uh, considerations. Number one, the linear actuator uh, works much better on a 90 degree orientation. Number two, with the coax cables coming off the back, if you were to go 180, you'd have those uh, essentially striking the mast. So 90 degrees is a, uh, a fine consideration for this. The, both antennas are connected from uh, through coax to a, uh, a length of hard line. We've got half inch hard line running just below the rotator. You can see the one loop on the one side. That's where the coax connects to the half inch hard line. That hard line goes down into the uh, into the shack from there. So there's very low loss. I do not have any preamps on the antennas themselves, uh, but I do have preamps in the shack for both antennas. Now you can see those antennas are nearly vertical. Antennas are now vertical, or as close to it as it can get. The array is going to be rotating 180 degrees so that it can begin its descent pass, if you will. You see that the coax clears quite nicely around everything behind it, so we have no concerns for anything uh, about clearing. Now, it looks like it actually went beyond exactly 180 to catch the pet, the bird as it's going just over directly overhead so we should be able to see it turn back counterclockwise a little bit as it's descending there it goes now from here you can barely see the linear actuator that's the uh, cylinder that's sticking up right in the middle of the cross boom. That cylinder is uh, covering the motor and then the actuator from there is attached to the cross boom. I hope you enjoyed this video. 73s and I look forward to seeing you on satellites and possibly EME. 73s, this is AE0MT.